today I got a 14 inch HP laptop, kind of basic. I'm going to do a couple upgrades. I'll show you how I do it. Hey guys, what's up? Dale here. Today I got this kind of on the cheaper side, 14 inch HP little laptop here. It's pretty basic. Uh, it does have a lot of nice little features though, as far as ports and things like that, but it's uh, really, really slow. Uh, so I'm going to upgrade the hard drive to an SSD. I'm going to do a clean install of Windows 10 21 H2. It's going to be a quick little video. Basically, I'm going to show you how to get into it. Put the new two and a half inch SATA SSD. I'm going to go with a Crucial MX500 series, just a 250 gig SSD SATA. And it's got four gigabytes of DDR4. I'm going to increase that to eight gigabytes of DDR4. I believe there's only one RAM slot in here, but it should take an eight, no problem. Uh, like I said, it's a pretty basic laptop as far as what's under the hood. I think it's got an AMD E2 processor in it. Uh, the model is 14-CM0045NR. Um, like I said, it's just a little 14-incher. So, but, but they even managed to put an Ether, Ethernet port, HDMI, a couple USB ports. Got a headphone jack over there. And over on this side, you got another USB port and even got an SD card slot. So it does have a lot of, a lot of the normal features. It's just really slow. So basically, I'm just going to get into it. Um, these rubber strips are going to have to be removed. Actually, the one on the front here, let's see here. I'm going to use a number zero Phillips screwdriver. There's two screws right here in the front. These are the only two exposed screws right here and here. So let me get those out of there. Just lay them out in a pattern where you know where you got them from. You want the two black screws here, obviously. So they match the chassis. But it's just she wants to she she just wants to start using it. Hasn't really done much on it. Um, and I believe there's probably a screw one screw under here over in this area somewhere along the front. So I'm just gonna gonna use a sharp little tool here. These rubber strips on these are really thin. They're self adhesive. I'm just gonna lift that up. Yeah, there's a screw right here. Get in the hole without taking the whole strip off because I think that's the only one in the front just like that put that back down for now then in the back here we have to take this back strip all the way off because there should be like three screws in here so I'm just going to get my little sharp tool in there whatever you got that you can lift these up and uh, turn them to pieces and this has to go back in a certain way it's got two little nubs on here it has to line up with the hole so I'll just lay that out of the way but yeah we have screw here screw here and screw here these pop open pretty darn easy I'm just going to use my blue triangle spudger tool that I use to open up computers she has absolutely no data on this whatsoever she gives two hoots about so like I said I'm just going to pull out the hard drive um, put in the new SSD, do a clean install. So we got those three screws out and these three in the front here, one being under the rubber strip here. So having done that, and forgive me if I sniff, I have the sniffles all winter long, every winter. Sorry about that. So I'm gonna take my little blue triangle spudger tool here. I'm just gonna get in a seam right here. Just gently slide this. So these ones open up pretty darn easy. If I remember right. So I'm going to flip it back over now that I got it started. Probably just lift it up here. Yeah, just like just like that. You can see it's pretty darn easy to get up. Um, if you want to disconnect your battery, and as I say in all my videos, protect yourself from static discharge. Um, I'm all protected here with my anti-static bench tops, my floor. I don't, I don't have to worry about it. But if you want to remove your battery, you can. There's only one, two, three, four screws, and you can lift and pull your battery out. However, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to be very careful. Here's the one RAM slot with four gigs of 2666 DDR4. I carefully lift that up. Just squeeze the little arms out a little bit. Pull it back away from the motherboard. And we got an 8 gig stick, a 2666. I'm going to pop in there. So every little bit of help, 
on a slow processor unit there's no cooling fan it, there's not much to these but don't touch anything that you don't have to guys but you know on the motherboard and whatnot but if you're doing this and you're not sure about yourself take out these four screws get the battery out of there push the power button a few times after you do that and then that way if you accidentally drop something you should be fine the hard drive is right here um, it's basically a friction fit compressed in there so I'm just gonna get my little tool here and lift it up just like that and let's see if I can get that disconnected the SATA cable of course it's glued on there comes out pretty darn easy no screws on that either again it's just kind of pressed in there in the caddy if you want to call it that uh, just double check if you do it that way you can also disconnect the cable from the motherboard right here flip that little black arm up just carefully and you can pull the cable out if you need be so I'm not gonna worry about that get my put it back in the same way you took the old one out guys I don't like hard drives they're slow compared to you know when you've been doing solid states every day all day for many years just gonna squeeze this back in there this isn't rocket science here on this one it only goes in one way just like that guys okay <clears throat> and carefully plug it back in again being careful of that motherboard the so battery's connected and i'm going to try to get that back in there just press it back down in the in the hole uh these things don't ever line up what's that motherboard well actually i'm going to press this side in first ugh thing wants to lift out on me I hate these caddies they just don't line up right good lord hey neighbor Can you do this for me just witness my no stamp like you did before for me. I'm recording a video just so you know. Oh. It's all right. <laughs> just sign here. Do I have to fill all that in? Yep, just your name, sign, and I think it says city. Yeah. Cadillac? Yep. Michigan on the bottom. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay. Is that it? Thanks, darling. You're welcome. Thank you. All right, guys. I'm going to disconnect that from the motherboard. It's giving me a hard time going back in there. These things are uh, microscopically wider than a conventional hard drive I think they just don't want to line up quite right too wide for the hole sorry about the interruption there guys that was my neighbor I'm her go-to witness for documents super nice lady always brings me food <laughs> trying to fatten me up good lord I'm just trying to get that press down back in where it's supposed to very tight fit it's right up against the motherboard here so I just disconnected the, the cable so I could maneuver it better and I'm going to reconnect the cable there we look good there I think it's down all the way we've got our extra RAM we're good so I'm just going to pop this back on keep everything safe I'm not going to put all the screws back in. I usually, well, take that back. I'm going to put these three back in the back. I'm pretty sure we're going to be okay doing that clean install. I'm not going to bore you with the whole clean install. I got tons of videos on doing that. You'll need a USB Windows 10 install flash drive. You can make those 
by downloading the free media creation tool from Microsoft for Windows 10 or 11, in this case 10. This won't, will not support Windows 11, it's a little bit too old. All right, so I'm going to put that rubber strip back on when I'm done, just in case. And these other screws, of course. So let me just flip it over, open it up, pop in 21H2, Windows 10. I'll put a link down below how you can make one of these bootable. You'll need at least an 8 gig flash drive or larger to do that. I'm going to try this USB. Sometimes on the HPs, this only works on certain USB ports. Um, going to go ahead and power it on. I think the battery's got plenty of juice. Let's see if it'll default to the flash drive. Might even take a minute to post. No. Came right up. If you guys can even see that. Glossy screens. Me no like. I like those anti-glare screens. But yeah, I'm just hard drives. This is an old Toshiba 500 gig hard drive even a lower end computer like this is going to just be a world of difference with a solid state drive in it there's no m2 slot in this model so we have to go with sata which is no problem so it's booting off the flash drive as you can see i'm going to hit next choose the right region and country or whatever that you're in i'm in the u.s i'm just going to flip through this real quick guys then I'll get all the updates and throw Chrome or whatever on there and all that fun stuff. Like I said, the processor, it's not fast. It's an AMD E2. It's CPUs and our smartphones are probably faster than this. But like I said, adding a, doubling up the RAM from 4 to 8 and an SSD, it's going to make it a, a pretty usable little computer. She may mainly just search the internet. Some basic apps that she's going to run. Hit next. I choose custom here, the second option on the list here. And there's our SSD showing up. Good. Hit next. So I'm just going to let this go. I'll be back in a jiff, guys. All right, guys, got through that. Like I said, the processor isn't the fastest in the world on this laptop, but a couple little upgrades we just did will make a huge difference. All right. Your region. Yeah, is and that's way too loud. Is that right? Come on. Yes, I'm in the U.S. skip additional layouts you can change any of this stuff I'm doing you know, that you do in the setup here later just through your settings add whatever and I always choose I don't have internet at this point of Windows 10 you can't do this in Windows 11 unfortunately you have to sign in or create a Microsoft account but not in Windows 10 as, soon as it comes up here I don't have internet I just choose that forego all that Microsoft account stuff. Limited setup. I mean, if you have a Microsoft account or want to set one up, that's totally fine. Type what you want to name your this way we won't have any passwords or any login. I let the customer decide on that. No password. I just want to get into Windows real quick. Or as quickly quickly as possible. I always toggle this stuff off, or no, I should say. Leave location on if you want. That way you can get accurate weather information, or not. 
We don't care about Cortana right now. Sorry, Cortana. It is really cold outside today. It's like zero. Almost done now. So let's get, Just need to get a few more 10 below, 8 below by this weekend. Yay. Finally, wasn't too bad, I've seen worse. All right, so we're not gonna worry about that. I'm not connected to the internet, so it's gonna be looking for drivers, but I'll take care of all that. Um, let's just actually open up Mr. Task Manager. I can't see that very well, guys, sorry. Uh, where's Mr. Mouse, I'm sideways. Go to performance. So we got an E2 9000E Radeon R2 graphics. Four computer cores. Hmm. Okay. Uh, memory. We got eight gigs of uh, memory. It's only reading, and that's normal. Let's say 1866 megahertz. Well, I had a 2666 in there, so that's what I put in there. Is 2666, which is fine. Yeah, a computer like this, it's like, mm, come on. Um, get over here and click on stuff. And touchpad. Anyway, so there's our new C drive, our 250 gig SSD. Anyway, that's all I got for you on this video, guys. Pretty easy little upgrade to do. I'm going to button up with the screws and whatnot. I'm going to get all the updates, throw some browsers on here and we'll be good to go so i appreciate y'all watching uh, check out more of my videos and like i said don't forget to subscribe i appreciate it thanks for watching have a great day